Okay, let's pick up some notation for the uniform distribution and a formula for the mean and standard deviation. Um, so in terms of notation, we can write this symbol. If you remember from chapter four, this little squiggles means distributed. So I can say x is distributed uniformly, which means its shape will be a rectangle. And it can go from A to B, where A is the lowest value of x and B is the highest value of x. So this would be our spread in here. If we subtracted the two, it would be our range. So when we look at that giant trait table I gave you, all right, let's look at that top most cell, right? We have when X is distributed uniformly from A to B, right? We know that on the X axis, we go low to high, A to B. And then for the range, right? The range would be the expression B minus A. So the height is always the reciprocal of that. So that's where all of this, this stuff is coming in this cell. So if I know just this information, X is uniformly distributed from A to B. I can make the graph here. I'll make it from A to B on the X axis and I'll use the reciprocal of that, that base. So one over B minus A is the height. Okay, if you are on a uniform distribution and you ever wanna find the average or the standard deviation, well, not the average, well, the mean, excuse me, the mean and the standard deviation, the mean is the average of A and B. So we'll find the midpoint there, A plus B over two, that would be the mean. The standard deviation is the square root of b minus a squared over 12. Just as note, the variance would be the square of this number. So the variance, if I were to square this entire thing, would just be itself b minus a squared over 12 without the square root. So with that, let's start looking at a free response question and see what we can answer. We'll get a graph, we'll get a mean, a standard deviation, and we'll answer some probability questions. And then we're gonna get our first look at what I refer to as the backwards problem. All right, so as I read example three, be on the listen, what is the variable in this problem? So the amount of time in minutes that a person must wait for a bus is uniformly distributed between zero and 15 minutes inclusive. All right, and then I have this little X squiggles. All right, so let's be on the listen, like I said, for buzzwords. I, I, hear, I hope you hear amount of time, right? So we have wait time, the units were minutes, and then I heard this other buzz phrase of uniformly distributed, right? So as soon as I see the phrase uniformly distributed, if I have that giant trait table, I know I'm gonna be in this column, meaning I'm only gonna use the rules in this column. All right, so in terms of notation, I'll go U, my low was zero. Perhaps when I'm going to catch a bus, it's there as soon as I show up. And it looks like the most I would have to wait is 15 minutes. So I'm going from a low of zero minutes to a high of 15 minutes. It also says graph the PDF. So let's make a graph of this PDF. Okay. Because it's uniformly distributed, I'm going to make a rectangle. All right, so here's my basic rectangle. Let's start labeling and scaling this the correct way. So in terms of labels, down here on the x-axis, I have wait times. The units are minutes. All right, and I've got my x variable. It also tells me I'm going from a low of zero to a high of 15. Oh, and as I realized I did this, I think I only went 5, 10, 15 when I was measuring it out. Let me rework that. Let me go one more unit, one more tick mark this way, just so I have enough room. All right, I apologize for that. I was not thinking. I think in my brain I was going from five to 15, but we should go zero to 15. So here's zero, five, 10, 15. There we go. That'll make this just a little bit longer.
Okay, so we got that. Now, if you wanted to start your rectangle here at the origin, feel free. I just want to be able to see the left end of my rectangle without it running into the x-axis. So both forms are fine. So I've got my x-axis, I've got it labeled and scaled. All right, now my y-axis will always have probabilities. And in terms of the height, it's always going to be the reciprocal of the base. So let's get the base of my overall rectangle. Right, it is the range high minus low, so it is 15 minutes. That will make my height 1 divided by 15 as a fraction, or if I want it as a decimal, let's see what we're working with. It's about 0.067. Now again, I'm going to leave mine, when I crunch all of these numbers, I'm going to work with the actual fraction. If you're going to work with the decimal, your answers as we go through um, the rest of these parts, they might differ slightly based on a decimal round off. So I'm going to go with 1 15th. All right. But just so we're keeping track, if you wrote 0.067, that's completely acceptable. All right, so there's my PDF. I've got my, my graph, or my distribution function graphed out. I'm good to go. All right, so again, when I show up to catch a bus, I wait somewhere between 0 and 15 minutes. All right, what's my average wait time? Well, it says here we're going to go A plus B over 2. A in our case right now is 0. B is 15. So this should be 0 plus 15 divided by 2. Let's crunch that number on our calculator. So I'm basically looking at 15 divided by 2, which is 7.5. The units on this, well, every statistic has the same units as your variable, so we'll go 7.5 minutes. So on average, someone's going to wait about seven and a half minutes to catch this bus. All right, the standard deviation is a little bit more convoluted. So I'm going to do the square root. Now instead of b minus a, we're going to write 15 minus 0 and square it. And we're going to divide that number by 12. And I'm going to do the radicand first. That's fancy math speak for the stuff under the radical. So let me do 15 minus 0, and I will square it. I'm going to divide that by 12. So I basically need to take the square root of 18.75. And when I do that, I'm looking at about 4.33. And again, the units on this, <coughs> excuse me, will be the same as the units of your variable. So 4.330 minutes. So on average, somebody's waiting seven and a half minutes. And then the average deviation from that mean of seven and a half minutes is 4.3 minutes. Okay, so with that, let me scoot this up and let's start looking at some of the probability questions that we're gonna be encountering. So it says, what is the probability that a person waits fewer than 12.5 minutes? Shade the area of interest on the PDF. So I see probability, I need P with parentheses, all right, waiting fewer than 12 and a half minutes. So our variable is wait time. So I want x less than 12.5. Okay, now I kind of scrunched that in. I'm just going to erase this so I have a little bit more space. So x is less than 12.5 minutes. There we go. It's going to be a base times height formula. Anytime you have probability on the uniform distribution, you're dealing with base times height. We just need to figure out what our specific base is and multiply it against our uniform height. All right, now it says x less than 12.5. So I'm gonna to go to my x-axis. I'm gonna to go to 12.5, which I think is right about here. So if I was gonna shade this one, this is about 12.5. And it says fewer than, so I want to shade to the left of that region. So let me go ahead, I'm going to lightly shade this one. I want to go to the left of that region. And just looking at it, proportionally speaking, that's a pretty good chunk of my curve, right? I would say that's at least 80% of my curve, like 75, 80% that I've shaded here, which means that when I get my number here, it, it shouldn't be something like 0.2 or 0.1 or even 0.3. It should be large. It's definitely over 50%, right? So just 
start to map out or connect this idea that the percentage of area you shade with respect to the overall rectangle should match the number you're getting. So when I see something like at least half, I've, I've definitely shaded over half of my curve. This number down here better be over 50%. If it isn't, something's off. All right, so let's do base times height. So let me crunch my base here. Okay, so my base, it's always gonna be low, oh, excuse me, high minus low, so 12.5 minus zero. So in this case, my base is 12.5. My height is that uniform 1 15th. So let's see what this number is equal to. So I will do 12.5 times the fraction 1 15th and it looks like I'm getting about 83%, so 0.833. And that matches what I was saying, right? This is definitely over half. I thought it was around 75, 80%. That matches the 83. Now, if you were using the decimal round off, if you multiply by 0.067, you got something slightly different, right? You, you would have probably rounded your answer to 84%, but still really close to 83%. Okay. So the next one, F, it's asking, what is the probability that a person waits at least 7.3 minutes? All right, so this time I gave you the X value of 7.3, right? And I want a probability. So I'm gonna go probability, stuff in parentheses. Now, at least, we've talked about this a few times, but it's worth repeating. When you hear at least, you can swap that out with the symbol greater than or equal to. And on the flip of that, just as a note, all right, when you hear at most, that's synonymous with less than or equal to, okay? So at least matches up with greater than or equal to, at most, less than or equal to. And again, I'll put this little note off to the side. Anything I bubble is just kind of off to the side here. All right, but let's go at least 7.3 we're still gonna be rocking a base times height. It's always gonna be a base times height. That's always what you do to calculate probabilities. Again, probabilities, they are area under a curve. Because we are looking at rectangles and the area formula for a rectangle is base times height, we will use base times height here. Now I gotta start inside my parentheses. Let's go to 7.3. So I think 7.3 well, the average was 7.5, so 7.3 is just a little to the left of that. So here's 7.3, and it asked me to go at least, so I wanna go this way on it. Right, now I'm gonna try and overshade this. It didn't ask me to shade it in this question, but I just want you to do it, or I wanna show it to you, I should say, just so you get a visual. So this is now the rectangle that I'm interested in. I've tried to shade this one a little bit more darkly, so hopefully it stands out in contrast with this other shading we did for part E. All right, I'm still gonna go base times height, but let's figure out my base. All right, so my base is, this time high minus low is gonna be 15 minus 7.3. So when I go 15 minus 7.3, my new base is now 7.7. Oops. Excuse me, one more. No, I keep thinking I'm gonna sneeze. No, I'm not, okay. So my base is 7.7, .7. great. Um, and we're gonna crunch this number. And before we get this number, again, I wanna connect this idea of this shaded rectangle to this number. This shaded rectangle is pretty close to half of the overall rectangle, right? The dark R shaded one. And it's gonna be a little bit more than half because the halfway point, right? The 50th percentile would have been 7.5, right? So if I was actually at 7.5, I would definitely have 50% here and also 50% here. But I moved a little bit to the left of that so I'm thinking I'll get like 51, 52% when I go to do my answer. But like I said, my base is 7.7. .7. My height is still 1 15th. So let me multiply that together and let's see what we're getting. All 
it looks like we're getting, yeah, about 51%. And just so we have it on here, if you had used the decimal round off of 0.067, you would have actually gotten, um, you probably would have rounded to 52%, but pretty close, right? This was 513, this is 516. So still a pretty similar answer as we're going through this, okay? All right, so now let's get into the fun one. All right, I'm gonna scooch this pretty far up so we're starting to see most of these problems. All right, but this says, what is the probability that a person waits longer than 10 minutes given they have waited longer than five minutes. So let me read that again. And I want you to be on the listen for a buzzword. There's two of them in here, but one of them's new to us. Or not new to us, new to this chapter. What is the probability that a person waits longer than 10 minutes given they have waited longer than five minutes? All right, so not only is probability showing up, but I'm hoping we recall the given, okay? We picked up the conditional probabilities way back in chapter three. All right, so let's try and map this out. I want the probability of something given something else, okay? Now, if you remember from chapter three, the condition always goes to the right of the vertical bar. All right, how do I type up or how do I write up weighted longer than five minutes? Well, wait time is your variable, so I have x, Longer than five would be greater than five, okay? That's the condition. And we've been in this situation, right? You're standing in some kind of line and you've already waited five minutes and then you start to kind of do mental calculus. Well, what's the likelihood I have to wait another five minutes or should I switch lines or should I do whatever? I know this is about waiting for a bus, but it's, it's still one of those situations. If you're already committed five minutes in, What's the likelihood you're gonna to have to wait up to 10 minutes or even longer than 10 minutes in this problem? All right, here we say, what is the probability the person waits longer than 10 minutes? So wait time is X, longer than 10 right there, okay? All right, so let's, let's take a step back and review conditional probability formulas. All right, so if we remember from chapter three, the probability of A given B is the probability of A and B over the probability of B, right? That was that formula from way back in chapter three. So we're gonna apply that here. So A in my case is X greater than 10, B is X greater than five. So my numerator will be the probability that X is greater than 10 and greater than five over the probability that X is greater than five. So, so let's take a look at this. All right, I'm gonna write this out for us. So we want the probability that X is greater than 10 and X is greater than five over the probability that X is greater than five. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna do a little side work here and I wanna talk about X greater than 10 and x greater than five. All right, if you remember from chapter three, this should be overlap. So where does x greater than 10 overlap x greater than five? And let me write them vertically so we can see the overlap more clearly. So I wanna do and x greater than five. All right, so let's make little number lines for them. And if you can start to hear the and, right, what's the common, what's the overlap between waiting more than 10 minutes and waiting more than five minutes? Great, but if you can't hear it on your own, let's make a little number line. All right, so we'll go here, and I'm gonna say zero, five, 10, and then I'm gonna make a second number line that mirrors it, and we'll say zero, five, and 10. Now, if I wanted to write X is greater than 10, I would shade this part of my number line, yeah? If I wanted to write X was greater than five, I would shade this part of my number line, okay? Now, where do they overlap? You can see visually they overlap right here. This is what they have in common, okay? It's X greater than 10. So this turns into just the probability that X is greater than 10. 
And let me try and explain this contextually, right? We're talking about people who have waited at least 10 minutes and people who have waited at least five minutes. If you're already waiting 10 minutes, you've at least, you've already passed this. You've definitely waited five minutes. So everybody who's waited at least 10 minutes is automatically waited longer than five minutes, right? You don't get to 10 without passing through five. So the overlap here is the stronger sentence and X is greater than 10 is the stronger sentence. So again, any number that is greater than 10 is automatically greater than five. So the overlap is all the numbers greater than 10. But here's how we can see it visually, okay? All right. Once we realize that this is the stronger sentence and this, this whole thing, this and sentence statement collapses to the stronger sentence, which it, it always will, we'll just sit here and say, okay, the numerator is gonna be a certain base times height and the denominator is also gonna be a certain base times height. All right, that was the kicker with these conditional probabilities is that you always had two probabilities to calculate and then you had to put them in ratio to one another. All right, so if I wanna do base, again, let me give myself a little work here. My first base, if I'm going greater than 10, I'm basically, again, cutting off at 15 because that's the longest I have here. So my first base is 15 minus 10, which is five, which will make my numerator five times my height and my uniform height was 1 15th, okay? So for my second base, which was here, right, we can see our second base Well, that base started at 15 and went to five. So 15 minus five is 10. So this is 10 times 1 15th, okay? And if you missed it, again, it's me going high minus low. If I was gonna cut my x-axis off at 10, I would do 15 minus 10, base of five. If I was gonna cut my x-axis off at five and go to the right, because it's greater than, my base is 15 minus five, which is 10. Now, if you remember from your math days, these fractions are gonna divide out, right? And we had that happen in chapter three with the table problems a lot. The denominators of your fractions in your numerator and denominator canceled out. Uh, and then we are left with 5 tenths, which as a decimal is 50%. So my answer there is 50%. If you've waited longer than five minutes, there's a 50% chance that you're still gonna wait longer than 10 minutes. All right, so we had our conditional probability pop up here. All right, so now we're gonna look at something called the backwards problems. And when I say backwards, I want us to just look at the setup here. It says 90% of the time, the time, a, the time a person must wait falls below what value? So I want you to take a look and, and see what they're giving you versus what they're asking of you. This time I gave you a percent and I'm asking you for a time. And in all of our previous examples, starting even with part E, I gave you a time and you gave me a probability. I gave you a time and you gave me a probability. I gave you a time and you gave me a probability. This time I'm giving you a probability or specifically a percentile and I'm asking you for a time. So that's why I refer to these as the backwards problems. And when it comes to backwards problems, all right, for the uniform distribution, if we're on the uniform column, right, you want to set your base times height to your percentile. Keeping in mind your percentile is from a certain number on down. All right, so I want the 90th percentile for this particular problem. So let's go try and set that up. And I want to give you a graphic idea of what's happening just so we can match this. So let me draw a, a real quick rectangle here and we'll talk about what I'm, what I'm getting at. So give me a moment.
Okay, so there's my, my PDF. And what I'm interested in is the 90th percentile. So if I'm talking about the 90th percentile, what time, and I'm gonna put a little question mark here because I don't know yet, what time does this correspond to? And basically, I want this to be 90% of the area under that curve. So what X value would that be? So let me shade this in for a moment. Okay, so what X value would that be? Well, I mean, if I'm guessing, it looks like 13, 14 minutes, somewhere in there, right? 10 is too few, 14 and a half seems like it might be too high. So I'm thinking somewhere between 13 and 14. Now the formula I want to use is again, this time you will set base times height equal to your percentile, okay? And the 90th percentile, again, it's 90% of wait times are from here on down, or you could say 10% are from here on up, but you wanna set, set your formula base times height equal to your percentile. All right, so what I'm curious about is what is this base? That's what I don't know. This is my variable. You know your height. Your height is uniform. You will always have this. So I know base times 1 15th equals 0 0.90, okay? Now if we go back to our algebra days, there's two ways now to solve for base. Some of you might just say, well, I'm gonna multiply both sides by 15. Great, if you multiply both sides by 15, you're gonna cancel out the denominator. Some of you might say, well, I wanna divide both sides by one over 15. Great, because dividing by one over 15 is the same as multiplying by 15. So what I'm saying here is, if I take base times 1 15th equal to 0 0.90, and I divide both sides by that coefficient, right, they're gonna cancel here. Well, this is gonna give me base, 90% divided by 1 15th is like saying 90% times 15. All right, so however you slice it, you're gonna multiply 90% to 15, and you're gonna find out that that 90th percentile is 13.5 minutes. So 90% of folks are waiting 13 and a half minutes or less to take this bus. All right, the last question on this example, and the last question we'll look at for uniforms, is hey, find the minimum for the upper quartile. Now we haven't talked about upper quartiles in a while, but an upper quartile, right, if we remember Q3, that's the same as the 75th percentile. So we're gonna run through the exact same setup, except we're gonna set base times height not to 90, but 0.75. So I have base times height equaling 75%. And again, that would be somewhere in here. I'm guessing like 12 minutes maybe, right? Because I don't want to go all the way to 90. I want to go 75% of the way. But I know that my height is 1 15th. If I divide both sides by 1 15th, I will solve for the base on this side because those two numbers are going to divide out. All right, so I will be getting that the base is 0.75 times 15 over one, because I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal. So we're gonna say this is 0.75 of 15. Ah, so now we have 11.25 minutes. Okay, so these are examples of backwards problems. And by backwards, I gave you a percentile, right? and I ask you for a value of your variable. Where in all of the other problems, I gave you a value of your variable, you see 10 minutes here, you gave me 50%. Here, I gave you 90%, you gave me back 13 and a half minutes. I gave you 75%, you gave me back 11.25 minutes. So those are the backwards problems. That's gonna wrap up uniforms. We're heading over to normals next.